Okay, it's time to start class. This is Math 1151. I'm Dr. Bart Snap. You can call me Dr. Bart, you can call me Bart, you can call me Snap, you can call me Dr. Snap. Basically, any combination of those words is fine by me in, in that order. Like Dr. Snap, Bart, that doesn't make any sense, okay? Now, let's see. Almost all of the information for this course is on Carmen. You can access quizzes on Carmen. Is, are, we, are we cool with this? Don't play poker with me. Like, I don't know. I don't know. Do you think I'm, I can't read your mind. Yes. Is it yes? Come on, guys. Seriously. Okay, cool. Okay, now, uh, this winter break, I was really busy. Dr. Fowler, you might have seen him setting up a camera. Oh, don't move that, please. Talking to you. He's moving stuff. <laughs> we have this set up exactly right, okay? Okay, so Dr. Fowler and myself and some other people were working on something that we call Mooculus, okay? You guys can do this. This is free. It's a bunch of calculus exercises. We currently have 25,000 students signed up for this all over the world. What's awesome about that is that 25,000 is a huge number. And we have forums there where people are asking calculus questions. You can go there and then somebody from halfway around the world, all the way around the world, because, oh, wait, all the way around the world, is that in Columbus? I don't know. Somebody, any, anyway, somebody from who knows where can answer your questions for you. I suggest you sign up. Besides, we have all kinds of extra exercises. This class is going to be hard, okay? I'm not going to um, lie to you, okay? I'm guessing that when you see the exams, you're going to say, what? They're going to ask us this? You should be expecting it to be hard, okay? Now, with that said, what can you do? How do you study for math? Does anybody know how you study for math? Oh, you got to practice. It's like a sport, you know? I can't watch somebody play tennis, right? Can I watch somebody play tennis and then walk out of the room and be like, I know how to do it and play tennis? No, you have to practice. You have to practice a lot, okay? And how do you practice? How do you, you what? You work problems. That's how you study mathematics. You work problems. And when you run out of problems, you find some more. You have to work problems. There is no other way to do this. This site will give you some more problems. Sign up if you like. It's mooculus, M-O-O-C-U-L-U-S dot O-S-U dot E-U. You see a little cow up there? That's a little mascot. Yeah? Cute, eh? Cow? Moo. Okay. Anyways, what questions do you have? Okay, so today I'm going to cover or talk about 1.3 and 1.4 from your text. I think this is basically review, okay? And my goal here is not to cover every detail. My goal is to give you guys the big picture. That's, that's really my goal. And try to give, do some foreshadowing for the rest of the course. Make sense? All right. So, some of you guys, has, have we all seen logarithms before? Log, we know log, right? How do we feel about log? Do you like log? Is log good? Oh, as far as, or is log bad? I don't, well, you tell me it's good, but I don't believe you, you know? I would think the people saying logs bad are much more abundant, but, but sure. Okay, so here's the definition of a log. Log b of x equals y. This is the same as b to the y equals x, okay? Can somebody, now in math class, what I really want to see and what I think you want to see are examples. Can somebody give me an example of, uh, of a true statement involving log? Give me a true statement involving log now. He says he doesn't know. That's okay. It's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's exactly right. It's the inverse of an exponential exponential. Uh, it's the inverse of an exponential function. Can you give me like a real like a numbers in there? Yeah, yeah. Log base ten. She says log base ten of a hundred is equal to 
2. That's outstanding. Log base 10 of 100 is 2. Give me another example. I'd like to hear another example. Yeah. Log base 3 of 9 equals 2. Log base 3 of 9 equals 2. Give me another example. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Logarithmic scales. What's something on? That's, he said pH is on a logarithmic scale. It's like as it becomes more acid, acidic, or basic. What is it? Ah, yeah, yeah. What about, what's something else on a logarithmic scale? Does anybody know? Richter scale. Which one is that? It's for earthquakes. A magnitude 4 earthquake is 10 times big. <laughs> it's a lot bigger, right? I don't know. You guys should look that up. I'm just a human being, people. Okay, so now give me another example, though, numbers and log. Give me one that doesn't equal 2. <laughs> log base. Log base 2 of 8. Good. Log base 2 of 8 is equal to 3. What's, uh, what's log base 2 of 1 eighth equal to? Negative 3. Negative 3, right? Because you raise 2 to the negative third to get 1 eighth. Does that make sense? Okay. Does anybody know? Does anybody know why we first studied logarithms? It helped us do calculations. Logarithms were a certain, were almost like a computer. Here's what happens. Where'd my eraser go? Okay. I need to. By the way, we're filming this. And so you can go home and, wait, uh, do you have a favorite TV show? What is it? Shameless. shameless, okay. While Shameless is surely awesome, okay, you could watch our calculus lecture over and over and over again. Wouldn't that be awesome? Huh? Huh? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Okay, so here's this. Okay, so how is it a compu computational egg? L aid, not egg. What am I, crazy? Okay. Here's the deal. Log base B of X times Y is equal to log base b of x plus log base b of y. If I were you, I might say, uh, so what? Okay, well, let's see if we can figure this out. Let's see if we can get to the bottom of this. And let me see if I can explain to you why this is true. Okay, so log base b of x times y. What's that? What's that mean? Oh, wait. Sorry, I'm going to start over. My bad. My bad. Let me start over here. Okay. I'm going to set x equal to b to the p and y equal to b to the q. What's x times y now? Is equal to b to the p plus q. That's exactly right. p plus q. Okay, fantastic. All right. Oh, what's log base b of x times y? What's log base b of x times y? Base b of x times y. What's that equal to? What's log base b of x times y equal to? You can read it right off of here. p plus q, right? This is equal to p plus q, because what do you raise b to to get x times y? p plus q. Okay, p plus q is equal to p plus q. What is log base b of x equal to? What's log base b of x equal to? Right? p. So this is log base b of x. And this one's equal to log base b of q, of, sorry, y. So these are all equal. I just gave you a little very quick proof. I did it really fast. It's like a magic trick. If I did it again, it would still probably be impressive. If it was impressive. Shoot. OK, never mind. So anyways, are we good? Here's the key point. I'm going to get out this crazy chalk here. 
This is, ooh, that looks good. This is what? what? What type of operation is right here? Multiplication. And this here, this is, that's addition. Logs are a way of turning multiplication into addition. You might say, well, I have a calculator. I don't need to do that. It's going to come up again. And it's going to come up again in our class in section 3.8. We're going to use logs in this way. Okay? Foreshadowing. Usually, uh, usually you only see foreshadowing literature class, right? Now we're seeing it in this class. I love math short foreshadow. I love math foreshadowing. Okay. Okay, how did this work as a calculator? Let me see if I can explain that to you. Shouldn't be too hard. Let's see if I can explain that. Here's how it worked. If you wanted to multiply two numbers, a big table was used, okay? And it looked like this. What you had was you had x on one side and log of x on the other. And you had values, okay? So I want to multiply two numbers, right? I want to multiply, say, x and y. So what I do is I go through my table, I find x, and I find log of x. Make sense? And then I go over and I find y and I find log of y. And then I add those two numbers together. And then what I do is I look on this side of the table and then go back and see what got me there. Does that make any sense? Nobody's saying anything. We're all playing poker. I don't know. Does it make sense? If you promise never ever to ask me about this ever again, then it makes perfect sense. <laughs> <laughs> so give me some feedback. Does it make sense or not? If you say, if you say no, all I'm going to do is explain it again. Can we, see an example? Can we see an example? We'll need a log table to see an example. Okay? I don't have a log table with me right now. Okay? But if you send me an email, I'll email you all an example. That's pretty easy. Okay? All right. And you get my email address from Carmen. Make sense? Okay. What we're doing here is we're using the fact that we can go back and forth. Somebody else said log and e are inverse functions. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Log and exponentiation. Remember, I'm going to write down our definition of log in. Log base b of x equals y. This means that b to the y equals x. Right? Okay, great. What's the plot of log look like? Anybody know what the plot looks like? Can you show me your hand? Does it look like this? Yeah, 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 I saw it. Ah, uh, yeah, okay, like kind of like the square root of x, sort of, or something like that. Okay, I'll plot it for you. Here we go. Here's our x-axis. Here's y. We'll use orange. Log looks like this. Like that. That's what log looks like. And where does log cross the x-axis? It crosses it at x equals 1. Because what do you raise b to to get 1? Zero, our favorite row. Okay, so that's what we raise it to. Now, have you guys, you guys know natural log, right? Natural log, ln of x. What's the base of ln of x? What? E, right? E, so that means that e to the y equals x. And by the way, what is e? E set number 2.7182818282845. And so on, okay? There's E, okay? Now, does anybody know uh, a reason, a rationale why we might care? This seems like a pretty strange base, right? It seems like, like, why would you ever pick that base? 
Why not pick two? Why not pick three? Why not pick anything but this crazy transcendental irrational number? Does anybody know? It's okay. I wouldn't expect anybody to know, but because what? Yes. The ln of e equals one, but log base b of b is always one, right? Works for any base, but yes, ln of the reason the reason is Euler here Euler Euler, not Euler, Euler. It's spelled like Euler. Okay. He noticed that if you plotted different log functions, they would cross this uh, x-axis with a different slope. Okay, and what's the best slope? Can anybody tell me a good slope? Like if I have a line, I'm going to have a line, it's going to be of an easy slope. What's a good slope to have for a line? One. And he said, I want this to cross the x-axis with slope equal to one. Which log did he find? He found the natural log when that happened. That's what makes the natural log natural. Okay? I thought that was kind of interesting. I'm just sharing. Okay. So there's the natural log. Oh yeah, what's this, the, what's, it's the inverse of, somebody said natural log of e equals one, right? So the base is e, so I should plot, yeah, I should plot e to the x, or here, here, here here's, here's my plot of e to the x, there we go. Boop, boop, oh, the curve, okay, that's pretty good. That's what e to the x looks like, right? Yeah, this would be e to the x. By the way, can you tell me, um, can you tell me why you cannot take the log of zero? Why can't I take what? Why can't I take the log of zero? E to the what equals zero? She said, "You had." I'm gonna. Take, I'm, gonna I'm gonna interpret that shaking of your head as nothing. E to the nothing equals, because look, as I move here, it gets closer and closer to the horizontal axis, but it never touches, okay? That's why you can't take the log of zero. These are inverse functions, and maybe you guys remember one more fact about inverse functions, and I'm going to say it right now. They are, they are reflections of each other across the line. This, is, this should be y equals x. Sound good? Right? I know I'm going really fast. Am I going really fast? Somebody give me some feedback. Yes. I know I'm going really fast, but you know what? You can rewatch the lecture. Okay. One. Hopefully, if all the technology works, which it probably won't. Okay. Two. This is all from section 1.3, 1.4. You have to read that section. Okay. You're going to have a quiz. What next week? I think. Okay. I think next week. That quiz, you better be prepared. You better read that chapter. You better do every single problem, okay? I mean, you don't have to. I'm not going to be hurt. I will be unscathed if you don't, okay? But you, you're going to be in the heat of things. You have to do that for yourself, okay? Oh, so this brings us to exponential functions, right? Exponential functions, what are they good for? What are exponential functions good for? What? Bacterial growth. That's, that's the example I was thinking of too. Okay, bacterial growth. Okay, so let's, let's do a problem. Let's do a problem with bacterial growth. Okay. It's funny. Log started off as a computational aid. Computational aid. Exponential functions were used for some other reason. And then they're connected. That's what's cool about mathematics. You have connections when you don't think there should be any. Okay, so we have a bacteria population. Okay, and it doubles every three hours. A, ba a bacteria population that doubles every three hours. One, how many bacteria after 42 hours? How many bacteria after? And we're starting with one. So you start with one bacteria, it doubles every three hours. How many after? Start with one.
What's the answer? Can somebody tell me the answer? We all like answers. We all demand answers. I'm going to erase this. How do we do this problem? Okay. Oh, yeah. You, you just shout it out, by the way. Oh, we can use a formula, right? But you know what? That's a, good, that's a really good idea, okay? But you know, I'm, I'm just going to try to think about it, okay? So um, let's see. It's doubling. It's doubling. So after one hour, after three hours, how many are there? Okay, after, so after three hours, we have two, after, how many hours are there, what, what happens next? Six hours is four, right? What do we, so then four after six hours, and then what comes next? Eight, what are we doing here? Doubling, so, so what, make an exponential function out of that. Two X? Is that right? She says no. What's the answer? Anybody? I know it's scary. I know it's scary sitting here in this big lecture hall. But you know they're videotaping me, okay? And I'll tell you what I'm not afraid of. I'm not afraid of not answering the question, okay? If you guys don't want to answer it, just telling you, I'm cool with that. But you better give me an answer. <laughs> How'd you do it? Yeah, so, so, so when well, you say kept on doubling it, tell me this piece of it. What's that mean, double it 13 times? And how are you getting those numbers? That's great. You're doing a great job. Multiply by 2. What's repeated multiplication called, people? Exponentiation. He's doing 2 to the t, right? Right? That's awesome. Okay, and how did you get that final number? How high did you go to? And why'd you go to 13? 42 divided by 3. So what we should do is put a t over 3 here, right? And when, when you plug it in, does it work? Does that make sense? I don't know. I have no idea what's going on. I'm just repeating what some guy told me, OK? Does it make sense or not? Yeah, talk. Ah, good. He says, don't we have to multiply that whole thing by our original amount? Yes. And what's our original amount? One. So this is going to be our answer. OK, and let's call it P of T for population, OK? And then you told me the answer, right? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to believe you. So he says P of 42 is equal to what? 8,192. If it's wrong, it's just because somebody told me that, OK? But don't worry, you're not on film. Nobody will know, OK? <laughs> Okay, so there we go. That's awesome. Thank, thank you. That's fantastic. Okay, let's do, let's do, I have another question, though. I have another question. Here we go. How many bacteria, two, how many bacteria should we start with Okay, to obtain 26,880 at hour 24. How many bacteria should we start with to get this many bacteria at hour 24? Make sense? This question is a little bit harder, isn't it? Just a little bit, not too much. I'm going to erase this. All right, can somebody get me started? You don't have to say the right answer. Any answer is good, even if it's wrong. I don't know. OK? Somebody, tell me something. Tell me an answer. I have no idea. 
That's a good idea. Maybe it involves a lot. What are you going to say back there? <laughs> yeah, how'd you get it? Okay, so, so what are you going to say? If X is the starting population, okay. Times 2 to the 24 over 3, because we're raising, we're doubling the population every 3 hours. So in 24 hours, how many times do you double the population? 8. 8. Good. Because 24 divided by 8, 3 is 8. Okay. And so then this is going to equal what? Oh, 26, 8, 8, oh, right? Is that right? I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just repeating what other people are telling me. It's called teaching. <laughs> My theory of teaching is if you learn anything in this room, or if I'm even remotely by you, I taught you it. Okay? That's my theory. Okay, so anyways. So now, what happens here? What do I do now? How do I solve for x? Ooh, 2 to the 8th, right? What's 2 to the 8th? 26, 8, 8, 0 oh, equals x times. Do you guys know how to do this on your fingers? 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, uh, 64, 128, 256. Is that right? Okay, he says yes. He's not nearly as excited as I am about that. Okay. Okay, so now, what do we, oh, we divide both sides by 256, and what do we get here then? 105 is equal to x. Fantastic. What do you guys think? So starting population of 105 bacteria. Good? Okay, great. Okay, I've got one more question for you. Okay, one more. And this guy over here was talking about logs. That's where this is going to come up. Okay, so one more question. Here we go. How long? Number three, how long, okay, would it take a population of seven to reach 57,344 bacteria? Okay. How long would it take? So how do I do, I don't even need, I don't care what the answer is. All I want to know is how to do it. Does that make sense? What should I do here? Okay, she said divide. She said first divide this number by seven. And why'd you do that? Yeah, this is like, we have this. We have 5, 3, 5, 7, 3, 3, 4, 4 is equal to 7 times 2 to the t over 3. Isn't that right? Am I right? Great. Okay. Oh, we divide by 7. What do you get when you divide by 7? Three thousand. 3 becomes an 8 easy. 192 equals 2 to the t over 3. Now what do we do? Yeah, that's awesome. Log base 2 on both sides. What's log base 2 of 8,192? 8 oh, you know, do you guys know how to do log base 2 on your calculator? What you can do is you can do natural log of 8,192 divided by natural log of 2. Did you know you could do that? That gives you, this is equal to, this is equal to natural log of 2. Did you guys know that? Somebody shook their head, no, I'm pretty sure. See, taught you something. Actually, you have to remember it. <laughs> What's the answer? 13. Awesome. So now we have, ooh, I took, I sh I, we go here next. So <laughs> we have 13 is equal to, what's natural log, what's log base 2 of this thing? T 
over 3. Yeah, OK. And then what's 13 times 3 equal to? Hmm, I can almost do this in my head. Oh, 39, is that right? Yeah? Really? 39 is equal to t. So after, oh, uh, that's awesome. OK, so does that make sense how we did that there? Anyone? Yes? No? No? Yes? You saying no? You OK? Purple plaid shirt? Good? What? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I'll, we're, I'll start from here. Okay, so we had a population of 57,344 bacteria. Here it is, okay? Right? Next, we started off with a population of seven. Here's the seven, and it's going to double every three hours, so it's time two to the t over three, right? So the first thing we did is we're just solving for t now. So we divided both sides by seven, okay? That's 8,192 is equal to two to the t over three, right? Now we have to take the log base 2 of both sides. Some people's fancy calculators might have a button for that, but the way you could do it is using that log base 2. Oh, 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 this is wrong. This is wrong. Finally, hmm, I was hoping to make it past further than one lecture without making a crazy mistake. But no, no. Okay. <laughs> so, so now I should just do that all the time. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. That's not going to work. Okay. So, um, okay. So this is log base two of this. Okay. Am I? Excellent. And then this is equal to thirteen. And then this because it's two to the t over three. And then we just multiply both sides by three, and we got it. Bam. Okay. Excellent. Okay. That's great. Now let's do something else. Oh, let's see. OK. Hmm. So e to the x and natural log of x are inverses. They undo each other. What is, what is natural log of e to the x equal to? x. That's right. That's outstanding, OK? Let me write that on the board. I'm going to erase some stuff. So, natural log of e to the x is equal to x. Check. OK. What's e to the natural log of x equal to? Still x. OK. They undo each other. OK. Because this is the thing you raise e to to get x, right? And you're raising e to it. You're raising e to the thing you raise e to to get x. But there's one, one slight uh, hiccup here. Here, we insist that x is greater than 0. Why do we insist that x is greater than 0 here? Does anybody know? Yeah, you can't take the log of a negative number. That's exactly right. OK? So here, this is, these are inverse functions, OK? Now, we know some other inverse functions, OK? Here. Uh, I like, ooh, I should just use this all the time. OK? So here's another inverse. You guys know a lot of inverse functions. Here's one. The square root of x and x squared. They undo each other. Is that right? Basically, yeah. And in fact, if I take the square root of x and I square it, that's equal to x, OK? And here we should probably also insist that x is Greater than or equal to zero, right? Greater than or equal to zero. It doesn't actually cause any problems if you allow it to be negative. You just get a complex number, right? Square root of negative one is i, and i squared is negative one. So it's going to work. But uh, just to stay out of those, we could say that. Um, now, on the, on the other hand, the square root of x squared, what's that equal to? x is a very tempting answer, OK? It's not quite right. It's equal to the absolute value of x. Check it out. Negative 3. Negative 3 squared is 9. What's the square root of 9? 
three. Okay? This is subtle. Okay? If you made this mistake, who cares? It's a subtle mistake. Don't make it again. Okay? And we'll be, <laughs> everybody will be happy. Mostly you guys. Okay, so now, this is great. Oh yeah, this is really important. So, this is the square root function. It looks like this. It's not, the square root of x does not equal, well, the square root of, I'll give you a real number, the square root of 9 is equal to 3. It's not equal to plus or minus 3, okay? And you knew this already because when you write the quadratic formula, would you, do you always put that plus or minus in there? You wouldn't need to if this put out two values. It's a function. Functions only put out one value. For every value in the domain, there's exactly one value in the range, right? Am I okay? Okay. So there's some other functions that we know. The other functions we know are sine and cosine. Okay, I'm going to ask you my favorite questions about sine and cosine. No worries, they're easy questions, but they're still my favorite. Bad news is, I'm not writing the exams, so none of my favorite questions, well, if they are on the exam, who knows, <sighs> okay? But I'm going to do my best to prepare you for the unpreparable. Okay, so here we go. Two functions I like, sine of x and cosine of x. Who's beeping? Okay, so now, here's one of them, okay, here's one of them. There we go, that's one function, and here's another one. Here we go, let's do it. Which one's which? The first one's sine, how do you know? Because what? Crosses to the origin. Sine of zero is zero, right? This one's sine. Good. And this one is cosine. Cosine of zero is one. Okay, you should keep these pictures. You should keep these pictures in your mind and not forget them, okay? Oh, and now I have, now I have something to show you. Oh, where, where did it go? Hmm. That's a good question. I have a slinky, right? Here's a slinky, right? Okay, so here's a slinky. Okay. So if I take the slinky, and at time zero, it's like this, and then I kind of like time, ready, set, go. Which function would better model the slinky's movement? Sine or cosine, do you think? Let me, okay, okay, we had sine and cosine. Watch again, so, ready. Okay, time zero is now. Oh, hold on, hold on. <laughs> I practiced this last night, it just didn't work. Okay, time zero is now. Which one's better? Okay, so now I'm gonna plot Good, good. I heard some answers. I heard some answers. I'm not going to say anything yet. Okay, you guys are doing great. Here's our slinky. Okay, this is going to be H for height. Make sense? And then on this axis, I'm going to put T for time. And how high, what happened, how high did it start off at, at time zero? Were you counting that as zero? Zero time. No, were you counting that as zero height or one height? That's a good question. Right? Let's How's it going to... That's a really good question. What do, you, what do you think I was counting it as? Zero to one? Zero to one? Just because I chose Yeah, 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 but, but which way is it going? Down. Down, so that would be zero to negative one. <coughs> right, right? If I start, so I was counting it as one height, okay? And then it's gonna look like this. And what function is that gonna be? Cosine, listen. We should, we should all get over being right. Being right, who cares, okay? Everybody's wrong most of the time, okay? What's better than being right is to be able to say, this is the answer, and they say, are you sure? Well, let me think, let me see how I can test this. Let me see how I can critically analyze what I'm saying, 
and then, and then, then recover and say, no, 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 I was wrong before. Who cares? It's in the past. Like my words that I just said, they disappear, right? It's not like, it's not like you're YouTube videoing it and <laughs> it's going to be up forever or something silly like that. Okay, so now, so now, this is how I would plot this. And I would say this model by cosine the best, okay? And what time is the slinky at height 1? Times 0, the slinky is at height 1. And then, what about here? Is that another time when the slinky is at height 1? Yeah, there's, there's lots of answers, right? It's hard. You can't really take an inverse function of cosine because it repeats itself. Does that make sense? You have to do something. You're going to have to restrict the domain, okay? So if we take sine, I'm not using hot pink. Here's hot pink. We want to restrict the domain like this, like here and here. And then I can find its inverse function on this domain. Does that make sense? And cosine, I can find its inverse function on this domain. Does that make, because, because here it takes a unique value, right? All, I can't tell if I'm making any sense now. Usually when these words come out of my mouth is when people start to glaze over. <laughs> can anybody ask a question if you want to? You want me to repeat? Does anybody want me to repeat what I just said? Okay, so okay. With the slinky, it was at height one. There's many times it's at height one. There's many times it's at height zero, right? It's hard to in take an inverse function. It's hard to figure out what time it was because there's many answers. Here, I have, if I restrict the domain of sine, there's only one time inside this domain where sine has this value. Does that make sense? These different values. In this domain, there's only one time where cosine has those values. And so what we do is restrict the domain. And so we have arc sine, which is also known as sine inverse. Those are the same thing, arc sine and sine inverse. Okay? Just different notation. Why might I not like this one? Does anybody know why I'm a little bit iffy about this one? Yeah, people think it's reciprocal. Think it, people think it's raised to negative first power. And so I kind of don't like that. Okay, so the domain of arc sine, arc sine looks like this. Okay, it looks like, make it in purple. Purple. Oh. Looks like that. And it just stops. It doesn't keep on going. I drew the whole graph here. And this is minus pi over 2. And this is pi over 2 here. And this point here, this point, this is minus 1, and that's 1. Because sine goes from, from minus 1 to 1. Does that make sense? Sine, we can see it going from minus 1 to 1. Okay. There's arc sine. And then arc cosine, okay, what's arc cosine look like? Also known as cosine inverse. Arc cosine looks like, what color have I not, I think this one's good. Arc cosine looks like this. Like that, okay. And this value here, let's see, this is 1, this is negative 1. Does anybody know what that value there is? Pi. That's what I think you said. I think you said pi. Okay, and it goes from 0 to pi. This goes from 0 to pi. Make any sense? Drawing pictures, trying to think about what's going on. Okay. So now, let me just try to figure out how much time I have left. Okay. You guys should look at all these inverse things, inverse functions, okay, especially the trig. Let's talk about some trig identities, okay? Again, this is like a review section of the class, okay? So some trig identities.
Here we go. What's, what's the most famous theorem in all of mathematics? The Pythagorean theorem. Do you guys know any other theorems? You know, it's so famous. It's shadow, but just blankets, black. I don't know. Whatever. Okay, <laughs> it's so famous that you can't see anything else. The Pythagorean theorem. The Pythagorean theorem says if you have a right triangle like this, A, B, and C, then a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. Does anybody know a trig identity that looks like this? Yeah. Cosine squared of x plus sine squared of x is equal to 1. Does anybody know why this is true? Is this obvious? Anybody willing to shake their head no? Yeah, Gryffindor. Gryffindor is a brave, right, from Harry Potter. Everybody wants to be in Gryffindor, but it means that you have to put your neck out on the line occasionally and do things wrong, I guess. Okay, so now, why is this true? It's not so hard to explain. You make, you make a circle. You make, there we go. You make the unit circle, right? And how long is this piece right here? One. That's one. And I'm going to make a right triangle inside this unit circle. I'll make it really colorful. Okay, here we go. There's, there's one leg. Here's the other leg. Okay. And we, got, we remember our definitions of sine and cosine. Oh, where's theta? This is, this is going to be x. There we go. Does everybody remember our definition? What's sine? Sine is something uh, opposite over hypotenuse, right? So this thing here is sine of x. And this thing here is, that's cosine of x, isn't it? Look, it's the Pythagorean theorem. It literally is, because this just says that cosine squared plus sine squared equals 1, right? Most important, most fundamental trig identity from the most important theorem of mathematics. Does that make any sense? What's the next one? Well, check this out. So we know now that we know this. What happens if I divide this whole thing by cosine squared? If I divide, divide, by cosine squared x. Anybody know what happens? What's cosine squared x divided by cosine squared x? One, then we get one, okay. Plus, what's sine squared x divided by cosine squared x? Tangent squared, outstanding. Tangent squared of x. And then what's 1 over cosine squared x? So secant squared x, right? Secant squared of x. These are fundamental um, identities, okay? And we're going to be using these at a later point in the class for sure, okay? And I'm pretty sure, unless I'm doubting myself now, but I'm pretty sure we're going to use them in 3.9, okay? Just so you know. Okay, we have about, let's see, it's 40. We have not much time left. Okay, I'm going to do one more problem, I think, and then we'll be done for today, okay? This is involving these trig things, and I kind of like these problems. Here we go. Simplify. Let me erase here. Simplify. Tan of cosine inverse of x. Simplify this. Boy, does this look like a hard problem? Looks pretty, uh, I think it looks pretty, pretty tough, okay? We want to simplify this, okay? So, we're going to assume 
that x is equal to cosine of theta, okay? Where 0 is less than theta, it's less than or equal to pi. You should watch this again. You should go over this again, okay? And then I'm going to draw a right triangle whose angle is theta. Now, I'm assuming that um, x is equal to cosine of theta. How do you find cosine again? What do you do? Remind me again. Adjacent over hypotenuse. So if I want cosine to be x, the easiest thing I could do is I could say this is x, right? And this is 1. Is cosine of theta equal to x now? Yeah. How long's how long's this side? Square root of 1 minus x squared, right? Okay. Excellent. So now tangent tangent of cosine inverse of x, okay? Well, look. This whole thing here, that's equal to theta, okay? And tan theta, what's tan theta equal to? What's the, yeah, that's, that might be right, I can't, uh, it's equal to, what's the idea, it's uh, something, uh, op, it's, is, it, is it opposite over adjacent or adjacent over opposite? Opposite. Opposite over adjacent, okay? So now this is equal to the square root of the 1 minus x squared all over x. That's pretty sneaky, isn't it? Do you see what I'm saying here? Isn't that sneaky? You're like, what? I, if I were you, I'd be like, what just happened? Okay. <laughs> we're done for today, okay? I'll see you all on Wednesday. Study this stuff.